Hey, so did you solve last week's clinical case? If you haven't seen it, please click here so you can watch it. In order to solve this case, my esophagus anatomy videos may come in handy. Please click here to watch a playlist. I would like to make a special shout out to Garagan and Maria Paula Endara for reaching the correct diagnosis. Welcome to a brand new class on DeanMD, where you can learn everything related about the basic sciences of medical knowledge and apply it to patient care in the future or right now. In the previous video, we talked about a 52-year-old male patient, Ecuadorian, that lived in the Ecuadorian jungle until he was 25 years of age. The patient's chief complaint is difficulty swallowing, known as dysphagia. This important esophageal symptom was already discussed in a previous video. The important features of this patient dysphagia, which are a progression from solid to solid and liquid foods, as well as chest pain, points us towards an esophageal dysphagia, because if it were oropharyngeal dysphagia, the patient will complain of difficulty initiating the swallow and also choking with food. Moreover, the presence of regurgitation of undigested food chunks, as well as the need of the patient to adopt a strange posture so the food can go down into the stomach, points us towards an obstruction of the esophagus. As already discussed on a previous video, dysphagia to both solid and liquid foods can be due to two main causes. Motility disorders, meaning a problem in the motion of the esophagus, or cancer, a growth within the walls of the esophagus. Besides, Juan also complains about weight loss. However, his weight loss is non-significant. In order for a weight loss to be significant, it must represent 5% of the total body weight. In this case, it should be 3 kilograms in one year. However, our patient only has a 5 kilogram loss in three years. Nonetheless, it's still a weight loss, and this could be due to the food getting stuck in the esophagus and not going down into the stomach for proper digestion. In addition, the patient's chest pain and the discomfort when swallowing can also be an important factor for a patient to avoid eating food that often. In the review of systems, we also learned that Juan feels palpitations, as well as shortness of breath, known as dyspnea, and loss of consciousness, known as syncope. The only important finding on physical examination is a systolic heart murmur located in the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line. This thoracic region corresponds to the mitral valve, and the systolic murmur indicates a mitral insufficiency, meaning that this valve is not closing properly. Besides, Juan's heartbeat is irregular, this is known as arrhythmia, so in conjunction the syncope, dyspnea, palpitations, valve insufficiency, and arrhythmias points us towards a heart problem because of his age, coronary artery disease is likely. This is when fats and cholesterol start to accumulate in the wall of the vessels, known as atherosclerosis, and can lead to a heart attack. However, Juan seems to have a healthy lifestyle. He likes to jog one hour each day. Moreover, he goes to the Ecuadorian jungle to build houses, which demands important physical activity. If we compare Juan's weight with his height, the body mass index, we get a result of around 20, which means that he's in the normal weight category. Therefore, Juan doesn't seem to have that many risk factors for coronary artery disease. Nonetheless, it's clear that there is something else wrong with Juan's heart. Juan's blood tests are completely normal, as we can see here. His EKG is positive for a second-degree AV block, type Movitz-1, also known as Wenkebeck. AV block stands for atrioventricular block. That happens when the atria cannot communicate with the ventricles, meaning that the atrium contracts, but the ventricle doesn't. Atrial contraction is stimulated by the sinoatrial node, while ventricular contraction is stimulated by the atrioventricular node. Therefore, an AV block happens when there's a loss of communication between the sinoatrial node and the AV node. A second degree type Mowitz 1 AV block is characterized by the prolongation of this segment right here, known as the PR interval. As we can see in this EKG here, the PR interval gets wider and wider and wider until a P wave, that is the atrial contraction, is not followed by a QRS complex, that is the ventricular contraction. 
this EKG explains why we hear an irregular heartbeat on the physical examination. This upper GI endoscopy shows food remains within the esophagus, which contributes to our theory of an esophageal obstruction. Juan's manometry that is used to measure the esophageal pressures shows an increased basal tone of the lower esophageal sphincter as well as an absence of esophageal movement known as peristalsis. This shows a motility disorder of the esophagus. Furthermore, the esophagogram shows a narrowing in the abdominal esophagus right here. What does this image remind you of? This is the bird's beak sign. So, in conclusion, if we add up all of the symptoms of esophageal dysphagia to both solid and liquids, regurgitation, pyrosis, chest pain, weight loss, food remains on the endoscopy, a manometry that shows a motility disorder, and Bird's peak sign, we have the diagnosis of achalasia. But we still need to figure out why Juan has achalasia. So here is when Juan's heart is important. The question we need to answer is what condition can affect both the esophagus and the heart? An important hint on the clinical history is that Juan lived in Napo, that is part of the Ecuadorian jungle, which makes him susceptible for tropical diseases. An important tropical disease that affects both the heart and the gastrointestinal system is known as Chagas disease. This is a type of infectious disease due to a microorganism known as Trypanosoma cruzi, which is a parasitic protozoan. This parasite is transmitted via vector, which are the insects from the family known as the triatomines. These insects feed on human blood. When the insect is feeding, it defecates on human skin and the trypanosoma, which is found on the insect feces, can enter the human body through the wound. This leads to an acute infection that can have no symptoms at all or can sometimes present as an inflammation in the site of the insect bite. This is where the pediatric history comes in handy. What the patient thought to be an allergic reaction of his eyelid actually is known as Romagna's sign, that is a swollen eyelid due to the inoculation of the Trypanosoma cruzi. After the acute infection, the parasite can remain dormant in the human body for many years and then cause something known as the chronic disease, which usually affects the heart, known as chagasic cardiomyopathy, as well as the gastrointestinal system. This is why Juan has a second degree AV block, as well as mitral valve insufficiency with achalasia. The trypanosoma loves to attack the nerves of the esophagus leading to achalasia. This also explains Juan's family history of a father who died due to heart disease that can be due to Chagas and also a mother who was operated due to bulvulus. Patients with Chagas also have an affectation in the colon, the large bowel, making it huge, known as megacolon, causing a huge sigmoid to twist upon itself leading to the mother's bulvulus. If you would like to read more about the topics discussed in this video, I'll put my reference down below in the description. Also, if you have any questions, please don't doubt to write it in the comment section. Before you do, make sure that your question wasn't asked already. If it has, please give that question a like and the three questions with the most likes will be answered in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching. And remember, it's always for our patients. If you like this video and the content I make, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video. With your help, I'm sure we can get free medical content to every corner of this world.